from Hollywood, the Hollywood Radio Theater. Starring Cary Grant and Phyllis Thaxter in The Bishop's Wife. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Irving Cummings. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Samuel Goldwyn is noted for the many distinguished motion pictures he has brought to the screen. And it's my opinion that tonight's play, The Bishop's Wife, is one of the most enchanting. And I'm sure you agree that we have a most accomplished actress in the title role, Phyllis Thaxter. And recreating his original part, one of the most expert comedians in our profession, Cary Grant. Now, The Bishop's Wife, starring Cary Grant as Dudley and Phyllis Thaxter as Julia. It's late afternoon in December. In a rather shabby section of a large city, two old friends have an unexpected meeting. Julia, what a wonderful surprise. Professor Wuthering. My dear, beautiful Julia. And tell me, how's Henry? Oh, he's, he's well, I suppose, but so tired and worried. Raising money for the new cathedral, huh? And you, how's your book coming? Oh, splendidly. Greatest history of Rome since Gibbons. Oh, I wish it weren't so late. The cathedral committee's meeting with Henry, and I, I really should be there. Well, one of these days we'll have time for a nice talk again. Oh, here, for Henry's cathedral fund. This coin? It has very little value, I'm afraid. Just an old Roman coin. Oh, it's a wonderful contribution. Nonsense. It might be called the widow's mite, only I'm not a wi... Uh, Julia, what's the matter? Nothing. I... I... Oh, if Henry and I could only spend Christmas back here where we were so happy with you and all our old friends. No, no, no. I, I'm sorry. That was really very childish of me. Goodbye, Professor. Goodbye, Julia. Why, Professor, how good to see you again. Hmm? Who are you? And how well you look after all these years. Well, don't you remember me? Uh, let's see. It, it wasn't Vienna, was it? Vienna. Beautiful old Vienna. When I was lecturing on Roman history. Ah, what splendid lectures they were. And what a one you were with the ladies. <laughs> uh, fancy you remembering that. <laughs> I, uh, I've been standing on the corner watching you, Professor. You and Julia. You know Julia? In a way, yes. Poor girl. She's unhappy? Yes. When were you in Vienna? Oh, many times. I, uh, I'm interested in Julia, Professor, and Henry. What seems to be their trouble? Oh, no special trouble, I imagine. Henry's a bishop now, hmm? Oh, yes. Uh, that used to be his church over there. Mm hmm St. Timothy's. Perishing from neglect. Ah, it's such a nice little church. Well, delighted to have seen you again, Professor. Strange. Unless I've completely lost my memory, I've never seen that fellow before in my life. Julia? Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I'm so late, Henry. Oh, has everyone gone? Yes, dear. Some time ago. Oh, not another argument, Henry. Mrs. Hamilton was... Mrs. Hamilton is a selfish, vain old... Either we build a cathedral the way she wants it, or it won't be built at all. Oh, what a ghastly meeting. You didn't give in to her. Indeed not. I had the most unchristian impulse to take those blueprints and give her a good whack over her mink coat. Here, Henry, a contribution I collected. It's an old Roman coin from Professor Wutheridge. And what does he think I can do with it? Well, it's the beginning, and now all you need is another four million dollars. Julia. Don't be flippant about this. I'm sorry. I want this cathedral. I want its light to shine. I want... And what about us, Henry? What about our marriage? Well, that's a strange question to ask. Oh, we used to be so happy. We used to make other people happy. Oh, Henry, you're no promoter. Kowtowing to people, flattering them, begging them. Julia, if dinner's ready... Yes, of course. Thank you, dear. I have a lot of work to do tonight. Mm, the soup's very good, Matilda. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Brom. Julia, I, uh, I was just thinking, tomorrow, perhaps we could spend the day together. Henry. Call on the professor, maybe? Have lunch at Michelle's. Michelle's? Oh, it's been years since we've been there. Oh, please forgive me. Uh, yes, Miss Cassaway. It's Mr. Trevor again. He simply insists upon talking to you. Julia? 
He's on the cathedral committee, isn't he? Well, go ahead, dear. You better talk to him. Yes, Mr. Trevor. Very well, Mr. Trevor. I'll be there. Yes, 10.30 tomorrow morning. Good night. Oh, you may as well go on home now, Miss Cassaway. Thank you. Oh, and don't forget you have a speech to make tomorrow at the Junior Assembly. Oh, no. What time? It's a luncheon meeting, 1 o'clock. Good night, Bishop. Good night, Miss Cassaway. Oh, dear Lord, what am I to do? Can't you help me? Can't you tell me? Oh, please. Please help me. Yes? Good evening. What can I do for you? Uh, that isn't the question, Henry. The question is, what can I do for you? Look, I'm afraid you must telephone for an appointment. I, uh, I haven't finished dinner. I know, Henry. But you asked for help, you know. I asked for... Who told you I asked for help? Well, you're known to be a good man, and you were heard. I was instructed to come here in answer to your prayer. Who are you? I'm an angel. I, I beg your pardon. An angel. An angel. I knew it. I knew it. I've been working too yes, hard. Well, now, don't... <laughs> don't be alarmed, Henry. I know it's hard to believe even for you, but this is my district, and uh, do I... Do you, uh... Do you mind if I sit down? Oh, please do. Now, now, let's see. You have some problem concerning the building of a new cathedral. Yes. Mm. Uh, Henry, don't you believe I am what I say I am? Well, how can I? I have nothing but your word for it. Oh, but you are a bishop. You, of all people, can trust the word of an angel. <laughs> well, what do you uh, propose to do? Perform a miracle? If necessary. Well, why don't you? Why don't you create a cathedral with a wave of your hand? Oh, now, you wouldn't want me to do that. How would you explain it? Well, I, uh... Henry, is anything wrong? Oh, I'm sorry. How have you been, Julia? I'm Dudley. Henry is engaging me to help him with his work. You're going to be his assistant? That's it, exactly. I'm going to help Henry to get some relaxation. Oh, that's just what I've been praying for. Oh, you too. <laughs> Henry, oh, I'm so <laughs> relieved, dear. Where do you come from, Dudley? Mm, all around. Uh, Julia, this man claims he's an... I... I've been doing some social work downtown. Julia, if you don't mind, I must talk to this... Uh, this gentleman alone. Well, we were just having dinner, Dudley. Won't you join us? Oh, that's very kind of you, but I really must go. I'll, uh... I'll see you both in the morning. In the morning? Oh, yes. Bright and early. Mm, I'll wait for you in the dining room, Henry. Good night. Good night, Julia. Are you quite sure you're an angel? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know it isn't easy, Henry, but you've just got to take me on faith. Yes, but for how long? How long will it take? Until you can utter another prayer and say that you have no further need of me. Now, uh, Julia's waiting, Henry. Yes, I know, but I still don't understand. Dudley? Dudley, where are you? Dudley! What's wrong, Henry? You look so pale. I, uh, uh do I? Oh, what's the rest of Dudley's name? I don't know. Henry, why are you trembling? A lesser man would quiver. You'll feel better after you've eaten. And Matilda's baked your favorite dessert, dear. Angel food cake. <coughs> <coughs> Good morning, Henry. Well, here I am, completely at your service. Uh, Dudley, I didn't sleep 20 minutes last night. I, I'm in a highly nervous condition. Oh, well, then. The first thing we'll have to... Oh, good morning, Julia. Good morning, Dudley. It's a lovely day. Lovely. Uh, Henry and I are going out together. Julia, I, I'm terribly sorry, but we can't. I've got to see Mr. Trevor at 10.30, and after that, there's the junior assembly. But you promised, Henry. Couldn't... Well, couldn't Dudley represent you at those meetings? Could I? That's out of the question. Oh. Uh... Dudley, I want to speak to my wife alone. Of course. Uh, in the hall, dear. Julia, you see, the trouble is... Uh, well, that man in there... Oh, I can't explain. You needn't try, Henry. This is the way it is, and this is the way it always will be. I'll see you at dinner, dear. Dudley, what are you doing? I'm just looking through your files, Henry. Well, I see that Mrs. Hamilton has pledged a million dollars to the cathedral fund. But she hasn't sent her check. Oh, never mind that file. Let's work for a bookkeeper, not for an ain't... Uh, <clears throat> work for a bookkeeper. Well, so you're beginning to believe in me. I don't know who you are, where you came from. I only wish you'd make haste. Because the cathedral must be built? 
Well, obviously, that's the most important thing. Oh, because Julia must be happy. Now, it's going to be difficult to help you, Henry, until I'm sure what it is you really want. Yes. Well, I'm afraid you'll have to excuse me now. Mr. Trevor likes punctuality. Well, then run along, Henry. This fire's in an awful mess. I think I'll reorganize it. I still think you're wasting your time on unimportant details. Nothing's unimportant, Henry. Remember, we're interested even in the lowliest sparrow. <clears throat> bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. Hello. We shook. Oh, hello, Debbie. Come in. How did you there do that just now? All those cards in Daddy's file. He just waved your hand and they all jumped out of the box and then he jumped right back in again. Oh, that, well, that's just my system of rearranging card files. <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> Some other time, huh? You're Dudley, aren't you? Mommy says you're very nice. Well, that's extremely kind of Mommy. She said that maybe with you here, maybe we'll get to see Daddy once in a while. Yes, maybe we will. Debbie, come along, dear. Uh, oh, so you're going out? To the park. I'm in a play in the snow. Bye, Dudley. Bye, Debbie. Have a nice time. <laughs> Julia? Dudley, but what are you doing here? Oh, I often walk in the park. Well, Debbie seems to be having a fine time over there. Aren't you supposed to be working? No, I always take a walk before lunch. Relaxing, you know. Oh, I wish you could convince Henry of that. Mm. Speaking of lunch, Julia, I thought I'd go to Michelle's. You ever been there? Michelle's? Oh, yes. Yes, we used to go there years ago. Well, how about going there today? You and I to Michelle's? Oh, oh no, I couldn't. Oh, why not? Well, I, I... Well, now, surely you don't think Henry would mind. Oh, no, no, it isn't that. It's Well, well you see, Matilda's took, taking the day off for Christmas shopping, and I have to look after Debbie. Ah, yes, yes. Well, now, here's Matilda now. Hello, Mrs. Brown. Matilda. I just thought, Mrs. Brown, I just thought that if you wish, I'll take Debbie home. But you're shopping. Oh, finished. I finished it so quick, it was just like a miracle. You don't say. I thought, I thought Debbie might like to go home and make Christmas cookies. Oh, I'm sure she'd love to. Well, then, Miss Brown, I'll just go and get her. <laughs> well, Julia, Michelle's? Why, why, I think that would be very nice. Good. Dudley? Yes? Just a minute ago, when you said you saw Matilda. Yes? Oh, oh, it's nonsense. What's nonsense? But you were looking the other way when you said you saw her. I was? Well, I mean, I, I, I thought you were. Oh, how silly of me. Wait here, Dudley. I'll say goodbye to Debbie. So glad you knew about Michelle's Dudley. So nice to be back here again. Only Only Well, you seem to know so much. It makes me feel uncomfortable. <laughs> In that case, I'm sorry I ever learned anything. You have memories of this place, haven't you? It was in this restaurant that Henry asked me to marry him. Yes, I know. You know? <laughs> I mean, I know how you must feel. My, my, there's a fortune teller over there. Care to have your palm read? No, thank you. Would you? I know too much about myself as it is. And I... I know so little about myself. Really? May I look at your hand? Can you tell fortunes, too? Well, that's not too difficult. Well, what do you see? Well, you know, I never noticed, Julia. Your eyes are green. <laughs> oh, I see a great deal of happiness. I see a woman who's adored. I see a rich, full life. Do you see Henry's new cathedral? Uh, no, that's not very clear. There's a kind of fuzziness about that. And, and Debbie. Oh, no need to worry about her. She'll be like you, Julia. She'll have youth and beauty, no matter how old she lives to be. But people do grow old. Oh, not everybody. Only those who were born old to begin with. You, Julia, were born young. You'll remain that way. I wish I could believe you. You may. You haven't looked at my hand once. I simply don't know what to think of you, Dudley, whether you're serious or joking. Well, I'm at my most serious when I'm joking. Then maybe you should... Oh, no. Now what? That, that table over there. No, 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 don't look. Three ladies, all on the cathedral committee, and they're simply glaring at me. Well? They, they saw you holding my hand. Oh, my hand. Oh, my hand. Well, then, if you'll excuse me, I'd better do something about it, hadn't I? What did you do to them, Dudley? Now they're smiling at me. They're waving. Well, wave back, Julia. Oh, yes. 
<laughs> I didn't do anything to them. They just introduced myself and chatted a moment, ordered a drink. A drink? Mm -hmm. And they took it? Oh, yes. Well, they're really very friendly, Julia. They promised to drop by our table a little later. Dudley, may I make an understatement? Oh, please do. You're a very unusual man. I'll let you in on something, Julia. You're quite right. <laughs> in just a moment, we will continue with Act Two of the Hollywood Radio Theater. You know, I read a story some time ago that made me realize that there can be heroes of peace as well as heroes of war. It was about a husky MP in Tokyo, name of Earl S. Whitney, Jr. He'd been supporting two war orphans, a Chinese and a Japanese, for three years on a private's pay. He took little Fan Tung, age 13, under his wing first when the Chinese lad began hanging around the Tokyo base. Whitney rented a place for Fan Tung and took over the duties of a father. Then Hirayama Chokichi, age 15, came along, and Whitney spread the other wing for him. For three years, he fed, educated, maintained, and clothed the pair. And then he took on a night job in a service club to earn some extra change. <laughs> he needed it. His army pay was $111.90 a month, and he spent about $100 a month on his two kids. He called the boys Mickey and Jimmy Whitney and hoped that someday they'd all wind up at his home back in Southern California. But in the meantime, even though he was only a private in the army, he was a real hero to those two war orphans. And it all goes to prove that such acts by you and your friends today are shaping our world of tomorrow. Now our producer, Mr. Cummings. Act two of The Bishop's Wife, starring Cary Grant as Dudley and Phyllis Thaxter as Julia with Olin Soule as Henry. It isn't every day that one can have lunch with a full-fledged angel. Julia's very happy, not knowing, of course, who Dudley really is. Well, they're walking home now, and who should they meet on the street but Julia's old friend, Professor Wuthery. Julia, what wonderful luck meeting you again. Uh, but this man, are you with him? Oh, yes, of course. Dudley, this is Professor Wuthering. Oh, the professor knows me well. The university in Vienna. Young man, I don't believe you've ever been near Vienna. Now, you know, that's a game we play, Julia. He always pretends he's never seen me before. But Dudley is Henry's new assistant. You mean you really know this fellow? Oh, of course I do. Oh, well, in that case, how about dropping into my humble diggings for a bit of Yuletide cheer? Oh, I'd love to, but only for a moment. Come along, uh, Dudley. Just around the corner. And I'm just enough left in the bottle. <clears throat> Here's your glass, Dudley. We'll drink to Julia. To a charming lady. And a lovely lady. You've noticed? Well, isn't it more remarkable that you have? <laughs> <laughs> when you want to know about a woman, ask the old men. They know. <laughs> now, when are you going to show us your book? Uh, my, my book? Uh, never. Oh, please. You're writing a book? You didn't know? You didn't tell me. I described the book in detail in the course of those lectures I gave in Vienna. Julia, I'm now certain this fellow's an imposter. Oh, that book. Well, I thought you finished that one years ago. Uh, oh, yeah, oh, I see. Uh, no, I, I haven't written a word of it. Not one word. But why not? Because I can't think of anything original to say. I, I never could find the right words, either to tell a pretty girl or to write a book. Well, not even when you had this coin to inspire you? Why, that's the coin that you gave Henry, Professor. I, uh, I borrowed it from Henry's desk. You wasted your time. It's worthless. Oh, on the contrary. You know, this coin is one of the rarest of all antiquities. Only 100 of these coins were minted by Julius Caesar 2,000 years ago. And that was when Cleopatra visited Rome. Presumably, these coins were used to pay a hotel bill. <laughs> Why, that's amazing. And, well, nobody knew about it except Su Caesar's wife, and she had the coins destroyed. But this one's you overlooked. You know, that's an unwritten chapter in history. And you, Professor, will write it. Do you know any more stories like that? Oh, any number of them. You're a curious <laughs> fellow, Dudley. Have you just begun to notice that? Where do you come from? <laughs> now, what if I told you I came from another planet? Would you believe me? I don't know. I'd believe you, Dudley. And you'd be right, Julia, as always. We all come from our own little planets. That's why we're all different. That's what makes life interesting. 
it's getting late. I, I really must be leaving. Sorry, Professor. If my wine bottle wasn't empty, we could say goodbye with another drink. Empty? Oh, yes, I had barely enough. To... <gasps> the bottle, it's half full. Save it for next time, Professor. Uh, I'm really getting old and I can't see what's inside a wine bottle. <laughs> Dudley. Yes, my friend. There's one thing that troubles me greatly. Well? To write a history is a tremendous task. I wonder, will I have time to finish it? You'll finish it. You'll have time. I don't know why I'd ask you that question. How would you know? You see, for quite a while now, every time I passed a cemetery, I felt as if I were apartment hunting. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Professor. Come and see us, please. I will. I will. Goodbye, and, uh, and God bless you both. Thank you, Professor. I'll pass that recommendation along. <laughs> Henry? I'm in the study, Julia. Oh, I'm so sorry I'm late, dear. Hello, Henry. Good evening, Dudley. Oh, we had oh. the most marvelous time. Oh, I wish you'd been with us. Yes, I wish I had. Is Debbie asleep yet? No, she's waiting to see you. Oh, good. I'll go right up. I trust you spent a profitable afternoon, Dudley? Oh, yes, yes. Did you have a profitable afternoon, Henry? Not very. Oh. Dudley, I, uh, I'd like to speak to you for a moment. Certainly. You'll excuse me if I lock the door. I'd rather not be interrupted. <clears throat> Dudley, I simply cannot go on like this. Can you prove to me that you're an angel? Proof? You, you, you mean a document? Well, now, surely you of all people should know that angels need no passports. Uh, well, I, I'd be a lot happier if I could see you perform a miracle. Now, what kind? Well, make this desk rise up and fly around the room. Oh, Henry, please. I didn't come here to do tricks. I'm surprised at you. Well, I don't believe you're an angel at all. I think you're a demon right Henry. out of... Henry! No, no. Don't say that word. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, now you know how I feel. Yes. Now, wait a minute, Dudley. I'm not through yet. There's another matter. I... The door. I locked that door. He just opened it and walked out. Dudley, wait a minute. Dudley? Well, now it's locked again. Dudley! He just went upstairs, dear, to say goodnight to Debbie. Oh. Is anything wrong? Oh, no, no, nothing wrong. Uh, you uh, look very well, Julia. Very bright and gay. And I feel gay, Henry. I think you're an excellent wife, Julia. Why, thank you. And I'm proud of you. I'm proud of the well-ordered life we lead. Well, thank you again, dear. Uh, do you think I'm an excellent husband? Of course, dear. Mm. Henry, I, I hope you're going to take things easier now. I mean, with Dudley here. Oh, I think he's very able. You do? Yes. He knows so many things. What, for instance? Well, you should have seen him this afternoon. We met Professor Wutheridge. Why, Dudley knows more about history than he does. He should. He's been at it longer. What? Uh, nothing. <laughs> nothing. I, I'll, I'll go up and say goodnight to Debbie. But don't you know any more stories, Mr. Dudley? <laughs> oh, I know hundreds of stories, Debbie. For instance? Oh, let me see. Well, I know a story that happened many, many years ago about a boy named David. He was a shepherd, and the town where he lived was called Bethlehem. That's where the star was. <laughs> Only David lived long before that star. Well, one night David was out in the hills tending his sheep. He was playing the harp and singing. And then, all of a sudden, an angel came down and spoke to him. How did David know he was an angel? Well, he didn't know. And that's the way it always is. You know, angels come down and put ideas into people's heads. And then people feel very proud of themselves because they think it was all their own idea. Anyway... This angel spoke to David. One of your lambs has strayed, he said. So David put aside his harp and went out into the darkness to find the lamb. Of course, the angel guided him. And when David found the lamb, he saw a great, ferocious lion there. Oh, dear. So David said to the lion, you get away from that lamb. And the lion said, you get away from me or I'll eat you too. Did David run away? No, and that's the point. The angel put another idea into his head. And David took out his sling, and hurled a stone right between the lion's eyes. Served him good and right. Yeah, I think it did. And then David picked up the lamb and carried it back to the fold. And then he felt so happy that he took his heart and made up a new song. It started like this. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Thank you.
Oh. Come in, Henry. I think you can tell the rest of this. Uh, some other time. Good night, Daddy. Good night, darling. Well, if uh, you're ready, Dudley, so is dinner. Thank you, Henry. Thank you. So right after dinner, Henry, we'll get a taxi and to go down to St. Timothy's. St. Timothy's? Tonight? Why, of course, dear. The choir's rehearsing for the benefit they're giving. Henry, we promised Mr. Miller. Uh, Julia, I've telephoned Mrs. Hamilton. I apologized to her for some of the things I said. I had to. She said I may call on her tonight. But the rehearsal's just for you. A million dollars for Mrs. Hamilton, my dear, is far more important. But you're his bishop, Henry, and I, I just don't want to go alone. Uh, my, uh, my evening seems quite free, Henry. No. Oh. <laughs> Definitely not. You've done enough already. Well, now, I was just about to suggest that I see Mrs. Hamilton and you take Julia to St. Timothy's. You and Mrs. Hamilton? Oh, no. Mm. Just a suggestion. Dudley, would you mind take going with me? Julia. <laughs> Well, Henry? Uh, yes? I think that might be a very good solution. Uh, thank you, Dudley. You're welcome, Henry. Mrs. Brown, I'm delighted to see you. Hello, Mr. Miller. Oh, this is Mr. Dudley, the bishop's new assistant. Mr. Dudley? Pleasure. Thank you. The bishop will try to get here later, Mr. Miller. Something important came oh, up. Of course. And he didn't want you to delay rehearsal. Mrs. Brahma, I, I'm really terribly embarrassed. O only two of the boys have come. It's, it's just too difficult, I suppose, trying to compete with basketball and Christmas. Oh, I wouldn't worry, Mr. Miller. They'll all show up. Hiya, boys. Hi. Well, what do you sing? Me? For soprano. You any good? I doubt it. Well, how about giving out? Alone? Well, you've got Rupert with you. Hi, Rupert. Hi. Now, what do you say? It's okay by me. Good. Then I'll start you off at the piano. This is Brown. Look, the other boys, they're here. Why, why, yes. Maybe basketball isn't so important after all. You can be proud of them, Mr. Miller. They sing beautifully. But they never sang so well. Never. Oh, if Henry could hear this, like, like angels. Better, believe me. I'm glad to see that you've come to your senses, Bishop Brown. You needn't make any further apologies. Thank you, Mrs. Hamilton. And in view of your generosity, the George B. Hamilton Memorial Chapel shall be located wherever you specify in the new cathedral. Hmm. Well, uh, there's one thing more. Hmm? That window depicting St. George and the dragon. Yes? I should very much like the countenance of St. George to resemble my late husband. <laughs> of course, Mrs. Hamilton. And whom do you see as the dragon? Oh, any dragon. Thank you. You said that Julia's waiting for you at St. Timothy's. Oh, yes, if you would excuse me. I, it, well, I... That's strange. Is anything the matter? Well, this chair, I... I can't get up. It's stuck to my... Uh, I mean, I'm stuck to it. Stuck to the chair? Yes, it... Uh, doesn't seem quite right, does it? Stevens? Yes, madam? There's something wrong with the bishop's chair. Oh, madam, it must be the new varnish. The furniture people should have warned us. Well, I... I do hope I'm not harming oh, the chair. this is preposterous. Awkward situation, isn't it? Uh, perhaps if you give me a little pull at the back, Stephen. Yes, yes, yes sir. Uh, <coughs> again, please. Uh, careful. Ooh, ooh, your oh, trousers, oh, sir? Dear. I'm afraid if we pull any harder, uh, Hamilton. Oh. Might I use the telephone? Uh, yes, yes, of course. It's right over there. Can you walk? Well, after a fashion. That chair, madam, it clings to him like a brother. Well, do something, Stephen. Call the shop. Get a plumber. Hello. Matilda. Hey, this is Bishop Brom. I'm in Mrs. Hamilton's. I want you to come here at once with another pair of trousers. Well, what difference does it make? Yes, just bring me another pair of trousers. Thank you. Oh, I'm so sorry this has happened. Oh, if I could only get in touch with Julia or Dudley or... Dudley! This is all his doing. Dudley! Now, now, Bishop, don't be nervous. Uh, have a chair, Bishop. Thank you, Mrs. Hamilton. I have one. <laughs> 
Imagine what's happened to Henry. He was so sure he'd meet us there. Well, I suppose he's detained at Mrs. Hamilton's. Of course. Mm. You know, Dudley, it's a strange thing. You, you seem to be able to make me feel as if everything's going to be all right. Well, everything could be all right for everyone. If people would only learn to behave like human beings. Mm. It's a lovely night, isn't it? Oh, driver, could you take us through the park, please? But that's out of your way, lady. Are you getting bored with us, driver? I'll drive you by way of Mexico City if you want me to. That's the trouble with this country. Too many people who don't know where to go and they want to get there too fast. Now, you two, I call you two very unusual people. Thank you. You're very perceptive. Hey, you crazy or something? Watch where you're going. Oh, oh, that was really a close one. Hey, you, you see the way I, I just missed that truck? Like, like a miracle. Yes, I know, but just don't overplay your hand. <laughs> hey, hey, look. They're ice skating over there. So they are. Julia, we're going ice skating. Oh, no, no, we mustn't. It's too late. We couldn't. Do you really think we could? Uh -huh. You can stop here, driver. We're going ice skating. Oh, you too. Well, here we are, Sylvester. What do I owe you? Not a cent, my friend. You want to know why? Because you and the little lady here have restored my faith in human nature. Well, good night, Dudley. Good night, Julia. Good night, Sylvester. Ah, oh, my, that Sylvester is a noble soul. His children and his children's children will rise up and call him blessed. Mm, this has been the most wonderful evening I've had in years. Ah, uh, it's the most wonderful evening I've had in centuries. Uh... <laughs> you know, you're a beautiful skater, Julia. In fact, you're beautiful. Well, well, you've come home. Hello, Henry. I, I thought you were going to meet us at St. Timothy's, dear. Julia, it's almost 10 o'clock. Oh, you'll never guess, Henry. We've been ice skating. Ice skating? Oh, and you should have seen Dudley. He's marvelous, Henry. And those boys at St. Timothy's, the way they sang, it was simply heavenly. Yes, I'm sure it was. <laughs> Did, uh, did you have a successful meeting with Mrs. Hamilton? Quite satisfactory, thank you. Good. I'll be right down, Henry. Dudley. Yes, Henry. Whatever went on these last few hours, there's one thing I'm sure of. Julia is absolutely blameless. Of course she is. But you, you deliberately stopped me from joining you by, by the seat of my pants. <laughs> well, Julia had a very good time. But I did not. No, Henry. Henry, if you'd sent me to represent you with Mrs. Hamilton, I would have gone. But you didn't. So I represented you with your wife. Uh, is that part of the normal duties of a, <clears throat> an angel? Mm, you know, sometimes, Henry, angels must rush in where fools fear to tread. <laughs> I haven't the faintest idea what that means, and I don't want it explained to me. In any event, you may go now, Dudley. I've solved my problem. Mrs. Hamilton is giving the money. Well, that was a foregone conclusion, providing you were willing to make a slight sacrifice of your principles. Well, don't you think it's worth it for this, this glorious edifice? I'm not so sure of its glory at a time like this. You know, these are rather lean years for the world, Henry. So many people need food. So many need shelter. That big roof could make so many little roofs. I'm dealing with a materialistic, selfish woman. She wouldn't listen to talk like that. Did you try? You came here so that I could have a cathedral. Well, I've got a cathedral. And I want you to get out of my house and out of my life and away from Julia. Suppose you pray for that, Henry. After all, it was your prayer that brought me here. Very well. I pray it. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, oh, Henry, I'm afraid that's no prayer. It was right from my heart. I want you to go. Julia doesn't. Julia, get out. Get out. Henry, Julia's about to come down those stairs. Don't let her see you like this. Now, just... Try to calm yourself. Dudley? He's gone. Oh, Debbie's awake. She wants to say goodnight to him. I just told you, Dudley's gone. But where? How should I know? But why did he leave so sudden? Because I got rid of him. I told him to go away. I, I fired him. Why? Because he's incompetent. He's no good at his job, and I cannot stand the sight of him. Henry! Believe me, Julia, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Continue with Act Three of The Bishop's Wife in a few moments. Make a friend and you make an ally. There's a thought for you to keep in mind, as many another American has. 
Take the famous all-Negro basketball team, the Harlem Globetrotters. As unofficial ambassadors, in one year they played ball before more than a million people on four continents. In Rio de Janeiro, they entertained crowds of from 30,000 to 50,000. During one summer, they toured Europe and Africa, chalking up another 600,000 fans. In 1952, they celebrated their 25th anniversary as a team by circling the globe. Yes, sir, the team organized by Abe Saperstein really gets around. And their exhibitions have been more than just a demonstration of American basketball. They've been a lot more. The team is a living example of American fair play and sportsmanship, in and out of uniform. Abe Saperstein now carries a letter which reads in part, The Harlem Globetrotters have proved themselves ambassadors of goodwill. On any future tours, please call on us for any help we can give. And the letter is signed by the United States State Department. In being ambassadors of fair play, the Harlem Globetrotters prove that by helping others, you help your country. We pause now for station identification. Curtain rises on Act Three of The Bishop's Wife, starring Cary Grant as Dudley and Phyllis Thaxter as Julia, with Olin Soule as Henry. <laughs> Two days have passed since Dudley disappeared, much to the relief of Bishop Henry Brown. And now it's early evening on Christmas Eve. Here's the list of your calls, Bishop, ending at Mrs. Hamilton. Oh, there's a taxi waiting for you outside. Thank you, Miss Cassaway. Oh, if you're through typing my sermon before I'm back, just leave the copies on my desk. Yes, sir. Bishop Brom, there's still no word from Mr. Dudley. Miss Cassaway, I discharged Mr. Dudley. There's no reason at all to hear from him. Yes, sir. Now, if you don't mind, please tell Mrs. Brom that the taxi's waiting. You can go to the crop shears first, Henry, and then to the band Julia! Office. Hiya, Julia. Sylvester, well, what are you doing here? Well, when the call came in for a cab, I sure hightailed it over here. I was hoping to be another skating party. Hey, where's Dudley? I, I don't know. Look, you got a preacher with you. Yes, this is a... Don't tell me. A wedding. You and Dudley. Sylvester, this is my husband, Bishop Brown. How do you do? Uh... <laughs> And now, if you don't mind, we'd like to go to North Maple Street by taxi cab, Sylvester, not ice skates. Good evening, Miss Cassaway. Uh, Mr. Dudley. Oh, how nice to see you again. Thank you. We've been so worried about you. And poor Mrs. Brom. Have I seen you? Have I heard from you? Where is she? She and the bishop are making Christmas calls. Then they go to St. Timothy's for the midnight service. Oh, yes. Well, this is Christmas Eve. Why, you should be home, Miss Cassaway. Here, I'll type that sermon. Oh, no, no. The bishop told no, no, me... you should be with your family. Well, if you really... Oh, thank you, Mr. Dudley. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Mildred. Merry Christmas, Dudley. Oh, dear me, Henry's Christmas sermon. The new cathedral, Mrs. Hamilton's magnificent gesture, money, pledges needed. Oh, I'm sorry, Henry, that's no sermon for Christmas. Suppose you tell them, let's see, suppose you tell them the story of an empty stocking. Once upon a midnight clear, there was a child's cry. A blazing star hung over a stable. And wise men came with birthday gifts. We've forgotten many things during the centuries, and yet not that night. Whom did you say is calling, sir? I'm Dudley Stevens, Bishop Brown's assistant. Would you mind telling Mrs. Hamilton I'm here? Well, I don't believe she's expecting you, sir. No, I'm sure she isn't. <clears throat> yes, sir. I'll wait in the music room. The music room, sir? Yes, there's a harpsichord in there. <laughs> 
I wonder if she'd mind if I... Oh, I'm afraid she would, sir. Oh, well, in that event, you'd better hurry up and tell her. Yes, sir, I shall. You? Who are you? Good evening, Mrs. Hamilton. Why, this is a beautiful harpsichord you have. My butler said you told him you're Bishop Brown's assistant. Oh, yes, Mrs. Hamilton. The bishop will be along a little later. That music you're playing. Ah, I thought you'd recognize it. There's no one living who knows that composition except me. Yes, what a shame that Alan Cartwright died. That only you and I would know his music. Alan Cartwright died nearly 40 years ago. You couldn't possibly have known him. I'm much older than you think. Mrs. Hamilton, tell me all about him. About Alan Cartwright. What is there to tell? He was the only man I ever loved. But I was afraid of poverty. He went away and I never saw him again. And so you married George Hamilton. I made George happy, I think. Mm -hmm. And since his death, you've spent a fortune honoring his memory. Yes, a fortune in empty monuments. How did you know about Alan Cartwright? Oh, it doesn't matter. Mrs. Hamilton, they're at the front door now. Henry and Julia. Oh, no, I, I can't see them now. I, yes, I can't. yes, yes, you'll see them. You'll go to the hall and greet them in your usual warm-hearted manner. You're not leaving. You'll stay, won't you, Dudley? No, no, I'm afraid I can't. I have a great deal of work to do. Bishop and Mrs. Brougham are here, madam. Now, don't keep them waiting. How do you do, Mrs. Hamilton? Oh, Julia, how nice. And Henry, Merry Christmas. Henry, I said Merry Christmas. Oh, uh, yes, uh, Merry Christmas, Mrs. Hamilton. He's gone. Why, he's gone already. Gone? Who's gone? Dudley. I might have known it. But where did he go? Oh, that poor man. He said he had so much work to do. Henry, you must make him take some rest. I've been trying to make him do just that. <laughs> oh, I can't thank you enough for sending him to me. Meeting Dudley, he... <laughs> I know it sounds ridiculous, but... Well, anyway, how did you ever find him, Henry? Oh, more or less of an accident, I suppose. Oh, more or less of a miracle. Oh, it was, it was. Talking with this wonderful, understanding man has... has... Henry, I changed my mind about the cathedral. You have? I'm going to give my money to those who need it. To the poor, the homeless, the, the unappreciated. And I want you to direct the spending of it. Now, you see, Dudley has done, yes, Henry. Yes, yes, I do see. And you understand. Mrs. Hamilton, Julia, forgive me, but I have to leave. There's someone I must see immediately. Henry! Henry, my dear fellow, sit down, sit down. Here, a glass of sherry. Uh, no, thank you, Professor. Oh, but I insist. Henry, you see this bottle? Now watch. I fill two glasses... Behold, the bottle is still half full, always half full. <laughs> Dudley's been here. Oh, yes, and that bottle isn't all. He told me to look up some ancient texts in the library which no living scholar ever has been able to decipher. I read them as if they were English. Let's face it, Henry, this Dudley fellow is not like the rest of us. He, he says he's an angel. An angel? From, from heaven? That I'm not so sure about. <laughs> An angel. Too bad. He's such a nice fellow. <laughs> He's brought nothing but disaster to me. He's made Julia despise me. Don't be ridiculous. Why, you and Julia love each other. You always have. Uh, it's only partly true. I love Julia. Why don't you fight for her? Fight? How can I fight against... But you have a tremendous advantage. Advantage over an angel? Precisely. He is an angel. Julia's a creature of earth. She's a woman, Henry. You're a man. Yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> and if I were you, I'd get myself home. That's where he'll be, waiting for Julia. Excuse me, Professor. Oh, uh, Merry Christmas. Henry, is that you, dear? Hello, Julian. Dudley. I came to say goodbye. I have to be moving along. Where will you be going? Wherever they send me. They? <laughs> My superior officers. 
Will we ever see you again? Oh, they seldom send us twice to the same place, Julia. We might form attachments. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, of course you don't. Julia? J Julia, I don't want to leave. Why? Well, there are a few people who know the secret of making heaven here on earth. And you are one of those rare people. You... You frighten me. Dudley, I, I, I think you ought to go. Julia, please. Don't send me away. What are you saying? That I'm tired of being a wanderer. I'm, I'm tired of an existence where one is neither hot nor cold, hungry nor full. No. No, you must go away and never come back. Don't look at me like that. Dudley, no. Henry! Henry! It's all right, Julia. It's all right, my darling. Now go upstairs, dear. I'll handle this alone. As for you, I've never before had to fight an angel. But I suggest you take off your coat and put up your... your dukes. Mm. Now, now, why would you want to fight me, Henry? Because you're a thief, trying to steal the love that belongs to me. Henry, do you realize that as an angel, I could quite readily destroy you with a bolt of lightning? Uh, I don't care. Julia means more to me than my life. I'm not going to lose her. Ah. Then I have news for you. I'm going. I'll believe that when I see it happen. Oh, no, you won't. Because when I'm gone, you will never know that an angel visited this house. And Julia? What about her? Well, there'll be no memory with her either. Or with Debbie or the professor or anyone else. I don't trust you. Now, do you may, Henry, because your prayer's been answered. That's not true. I prayed for a cathedral. No. You prayed for guidance. And that's been given to you. Oh. I'm being paged. Uh, just a minute, please. <clears throat> Well, goodbye, Henry. Oh, uh, if we should need you again, will you come back? Not I. I'm requesting an assignment at the other end of the universe. Is that because I was so difficult? No, no, this difficulty was in me. When an immortal finds himself envying the mortal trusted to his care, it's a definite signal of danger. Oh, yeah, there we go again. Yes, yes, I heard you the first time. <clears throat> I'll tell you what you do. You go upstairs, take her in your arms, and kiss her for me, you lucky Henry. Julia. Julia. Quiet, darling. You wake Debbie. Are you all right? Why, yes, of course I am. Henry, did you get that for Debbie? Get what for Debbie? That little angel there on her bed. Why, no. Well, I can't imagine where it came from. Henry, what is it? I don't know. I, I have the most inexplicable feeling of happiness. Why, so do I. I love you, Julia. I love you, Henry. Listen. The bell's from St. Timothy. It's almost midnight. We'll have to hurry. My sermon. It was all about the cathedral. It'll never do now. Don't worry, dear. You'll think of something. Something even better. Merry Christmas, Henry. Merry Christmas, darling. Tonight, I want to tell you the story of an empty stocking. Once upon a midnight clear, there was a child's cry. A blazing star hung over a stable and wise men came with birthday gifts. We have forgotten many things through the centuries, but not that night. We celebrate it with stars on Christmas trees, with the sound of bells and with gifts, but especially with gifts. You give me a book, I give you a tie. Aunt Martha has always wanted an orange squeezer and Uncle Harry could do with a new pipe. Oh, we forget nobody, adult nor child. All the stockings are filled. All that is, except one. And we have forgotten even to hang it up. The stocking for the child born in a manger. It's his birthday we're celebrating. Don't let us ever forget that. Let us ask ourselves what he would wish for most, and then let each put in his share. Loving kindness, warm hearts, and a stretched out hand of tolerance. All the shining gifts to make a peace on earth. In a moment, our 
stars will return. But now here's Ken Carpenter. Ken? The letters G-Y-A signify German youth activities. And wherever such an organization exists in Germany, you know that there, the way of democracy is being taught and encouraged. Our occupation forces are helping out through GYA, developing healthy interests through group handicrafts and hobby projects. A girl by the name of Helga is one example. She was pretty confused when she joined a GYA group. Her father had been very much anti-American, and she reflected his ideas. Luckily, she won a trip to Switzerland in a handicraft contest. Once on the trip, Helga learned that the Swiss people and the American women in charge of the tour were very different than her father had pictured non-Germans. Uh, she won't change overnight, but she wants to learn more about the workings of democracy, and her education is continuing through GYA. Such acts by you and your friends today are shaping our world of tomorrow. Now, Mr. Cummings with our stars. And we invite them forward for a special bow. Cary Grant and Phyllis Thaxter. Terry, after four months in the Orient, we're very glad to have you home again. Yes, Carrie. How is it you didn't go around the world as you planned? Well, Betsy and I went to Hong Kong and spent New Year's Eve there, and then we went on to Japan where we stayed a month. I understand you made a tour of the Army and Navy hospitals and visited a different one every day. Yes, we did. And then we flew back to Hong Kong for New Year's. But you just celebrated it. Ah, but this time it was Chinese New Year. <laughs> Listen to this. Kung Hee Fat Choi. And what does that mean? Oh, Happy New Year, of course. <laughs> but didn't you miss a lot of other American institutions, such as the radio theatre? Oh, not at all. The first time we were in Hong Kong, we tuned in the radio there. And what do you, what do you think we found on the Armed Forces program? Carrie Grant and Betsy Drake and Mr. and Mrs. Blanding. Really? <laughs> and next week, we're going to bring you another dream girl from Metro Goldwyn Mayer. A lovely star who has won more than a score of popularity polls. June Allison. And we will present her in her recent MGM success. It's The Girl in White with Steve Forrest, the dramatic and engrossing love story of a girl who thought being a doctor was the most important thing in her life. That sounds wonderful, Irving. Good night. Good night. Good night, and thanks for a delightful evening. The Hollywood Radio Theater is produced by Mr. Irving Cummings. Our orchestra is under the direction of Rudy Schrager. This is Ken Carpenter inviting you to join us next week at this same time for another presentation of the Hollywood Radio Theater. Hollywood Radio Theater is a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service.